Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you Grand Solar Minimum update on Thursday, December 20th at midnight, 2018. You're looking at the GFS model total snowfall. We're going to pause it here, Christmas Eve, and show you that Christmas Eve through Christmas Day, the day after Christmas, is going to mean a white Christmas for the entire West Coast. And then as we head into the new year, a heavy swath of snow moving through the upper Midwest and Quebec, as well as the northern tier of the Northeast, is going to spark a new year of heavy snow accumulation. We'll get to that. Keep calm. It's boom time. Snow, high winds, closed roads, and ski lifts in Colorado's high country today. CDOT put safety closures on eastbound I-70 at Silverthorne. Keystone closed all lifts until further notice. Winter weather, high winds, closed roads, and ski lifts in the high country. With driving conditions worsening, the Colorado Department of Transportation put safety closures on eastbound Interstate 70 at the Silverthorne exit Wednesday morning, 12.45 p.m. The highway was reopened. Skiers and boarders hoping to get some runs in Wednesday. We're going to be disappointed because all lifts are closed till further notice. A basin has only one lift currently open due to the winds. A representative confirmed winds across the mountain passes have reached 70 miles per hour today. Both directions of U.S. 6 over Loveland was shut. <coughs> Heads up! It's getting snowy, as predicted. Several homes damaged as strong tornadoes touched down in Port Orchard. Damaged. <laughs> this one's obliterated. Port Orchard, Washington, a strong tornado touched down Tuesday afternoon. Heavily damaging several homes and toppling trees. Some minor injuries have been reported, but no one has needed hospitalization, thankfully. <coughs> Look at that mess. Now, let's talk about snowfall and snow depth. Most of eastern Iowa hasn't seen much snow this winter season, as Iowans typically complain. The map shows the snow amounts from September 30th through December 12th of this year. The National Snowfall Analysis of the Total Accumulated Snow since September 30th of this year. Yeah. The only state that doesn't have snow is Florida. That's it. Alaska and Hawaii are covered. 49 states with some significant snowfall so far and winters two days away. And these red regions are six, six and eight feet when it gets to maroon, already on the ground. Some regions have over 20 feet in the pink and purple up here. Some areas already have 20 feet of snow and we're two days from winter. Al, get out of your hole and look at this map. And bring me a dude. Here's a look at Christmas snow depth since 1925. And what you can clearly see here is the 60-year multi-decadal Pacific and Atlantic oscillation. Boom, boom. Now we're going into a cold phase. What you're also going to see is these major spikes. Spike, 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 spike. These are solar minimums. 1950. 2000, 2010, and now 2019, 18. We're going to see a boom. Notice how they stopped the charting here. But we're about to get another spike. And overall, you can see the increase as the planet cools to the right. Even if we just connect the two high points, it goes up to the right, up to the right. This is snow depth in inches on Christmas Day in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where they complain. 
Clearly, it's increasing. Middle Georgia's weather in 2018 might be driving up your power bill. This is because of global warming? Ow! Get back in your hole! But leave the ball. This is crazy. Weather stripping in Georgia? Wild weather through 2018. Wild weather. That's what they call it these days. If it has nothing to do with global warming, it's going to be wild weather. And it's going to have an impact on your power bills and some shills. Did you know that the Atlanta airport just purchased a brand new $12 million de-icer in Atlanta? I wonder if it has something to do with those power bills. If you're feeling stressed about all this grand solar minimum nonsense and this jargon, global warming, global cooling, you can always watch some relaxing snowfall on YouTube. Here's one hour, beautiful, relaxing snowfall in a mountain village. We have relaxing two hours, sound of light wind and breezes as snow falling. And these are so that your children that will never need see snow ever again will be able to cherish these moments as if it's actually happening everywhere in all 49 states before winter. They will be able to cherish the moments that have so long been forgotten. If it wasn't for these digital videos, I don't know if we would ever remember snow. I'll leave you links below so you can weep. Or you can check out the facts. Here are the GFS models. <laughs> and it's a boom. And it's boom time through December 30th. So, winter's just two days away. We're going to see heavy snow moving to the Pacific Northwest, continuing to tilt British Columbia in ways that they haven't seen in a while. Moderate to heavy snows in the mountain of Oregon and Washington State. And then on the 22nd, snow moves into Idaho, western Montana, and eases its way down the Rocky Mountain front Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, you're going to see lake effect snow covering most of the Appalachians, Southern Appalachians. It's a Pocono white winter. Heads up, snowshoe. Heads up, all lake effect regions. You're going to see a white Christmas. It's going to be delicious. Christmas Day is going to be a nightmare for travel, and it will only get worse after that through the uh, upper Midwest. The 25th, 6th, 7th, 8th, Boom! Winter has arrived in epic proportion. And this is going to be a nightmare for many. And hopefully my roof will be on. Snows penetrating all the way down into New Mexico through Alamogordo into Texas. Heads up. Sierras, you'll never see snow again and there will never be any, be any more water except there's record snow falling right now according to these models significant storm system to impact the eastern u.s stormy over the pacific northwest we covered it check out the flash and flood warnings throughout the northeast from the beast from the east fog and lays warnings and haze and shays down here in the louisiana mississippi region Click on your county at weather.gov to find out if you're fluxed and what you need to do. Winter storm warnings and watches for northern New England in some areas, even though this is going to be heavy wet snow, crushing roofs, and we'll report on it. Winter storm warnings and watches in the mountains of Washington, southern Oregon, and this weird little spot out here in the northeast Oregon, southeast Washington region. Fog warnings through the South Sierras. Heads up. Heavy wind watches. Pink and purple. Everywhere. And those sneaker waves are just waiting to suck you away. So stay out of the water. BBC weather. Significant snowfall to slam into Europe as UK braces for snowy New Year. Significant snowfall is to smash into Central Europe this week. And next, as the lowlands are pummeled with driving rain. The BBC's Ben Rich explained, 
divided fortunes across Europe at the moment. On the satellite pick, we can pick out a stripe of cloud. This is bringing outbreaks of rain, some significant snow over the Alps to the east. Things are pretty cold with some dense fog patches in the west. And that's a band of cloud. We've got mild air, mild air racing in from the Atlantic. It's quite windy with snow up over the mountains towards the southeast of Europe. It's an improving story. The weather system that brought rain and snow to Turkey, gobble gobble, now sliding away to the east. Generally quite a lot of cloud in really tight suit jackets and lower jaw, jowl things. Generally spinning across Spain and northern parts of Portugal. A fair amount of clouds across the low countries into Germany, Frankfurt, Zurich, Paris, where you're totally fluxed. Temperatures are climbing though. Almost eight degrees in Frankfurt. Still a little bit of snow on the leading edge of this wet weather as it pushes its way eastwards. More snow coming to the Alps. In Paris, it stays mild over the coming days. Elsewhere in Berlin, those temperatures not bad at all. Sunny skies in Athens. Meanwhile, the UK could receive a blanket of snow cover across the country on the first day of 2019, according to the new charts. Whilst pockets of snow could fall over the Christmas period, the WX chart reveals the most significant snowfall will arrive slightly later. Yes. What a rag the Express is. Let's talk about the facts. Cyprus. Does it even snow in Cyprus? Snow falls in Trudos. Updated video. This is true. That's snow. Unless it's painted white and it's the Russian government. But we'll get to that. Snow fell on the highest points of Trudos on Wednesday. The Russian government actually is painting snow. We're going to get to it in a minute. Stick with us. 12 minutes in and we're about to paint the snow. Al, are you giving them money for that spray paint, you schmuck? Get in your hole. He was trying to sneak out. talk about Cyprus. Snow fell on the highest points of Trudos on Wednesday as rain and hail caused power cuts and agricultural damage in the citrus regions. Police warn roads and Trudos were slippery because they don't even know what snow is. So if that would be slippery. Torrential rain accumulated on roads around Poops, but we're closed. In Larnka, a whirlwind caused damage in the village of Perga. The wind hit at 3 p.m. and lifted roofs and totally blew everything around. Yeah, 15 minutes of hail damaged citrus crops in the village of Derona in Limassol. Rub that on your rash. Heads up. Kashmir continues to shiver due to biting cold. And for those of you that said you've never seen someone using an umbrella in a snowstorm, heads up. This is a Met Department official. He said Sirengar recorded a low of minus 2.8 and the previous night's 4.6. They're pissed. Kashmir continues to shiver due to biting cold with minimum temperatures across the valley dropping several degrees below the freezing point. Which it does every... A single day here. So what the fuck are they bitching about? Several supply lines are frozen because we didn't even bury them. Says total idiots in the region. And that's tonight's first boom. Bury your stuff deep. And your infrastructure you will keep. Black snow in Siberia caused by weather and industrial waste as of February of last year. This is being reported on in the Moscow Times. Black snow falling in communities. How disgusting is that? Unfavorable weather and industrial waste are chief causes for the appearance of black snow in the Siberian city of Omsk, according to the regional authorities. Now, what do you do? Well, eight months later, Russian authorities cover snow in white paint to hide signs of pollution in Omsk. Now, these kids were out playing with this pile of snow and rubbing their hands in it, and they were like, what the is going on? Look at that. 
can't make this up. You can see the paint. Authorities in the coal mining Siberian region of Kemerov have reportedly covered up the snow with white paint to hide evidence of soot and ash pollution from the public. Footage published by local media Monday showed a woman's hand becoming coated with white paint after she reached out to brush a snowbank outside of a municipal recreation center in the town of Minsk. E. Minsk. <laughs> Minsk. Well, you know what I'm saying. You can see the stains. It even sticks, she said, while demonstrating the viscous substance on her nasty fingertips. If this shit doesn't make you insane, then I don't know what will. So, the powers that be are willing to go to lengths to paint the f***ing snow. So, what she's saying is that downtown here, that these pricks painted the pile of snow because it was so being dirty. They painted it white. Absolutely insane. It's the footage of painted snow because it's so disgusting. Black snow in Siberia caused by weather and industrial waste is now being painted to cover signs of pollution. That's obviously cheaper than actually fixing the pollution. NASA finds extreme rainfall in tropical cyclone Kenaga. Kenanga. Kenanga. Say it five times fast. Spin it around. Holy shit. I'm peeking. Oh my god. This is amazing. I didn't even expect this. Whew. Look at that. Do you see this peak here? I'm peeking. That is space. This mother... Uh, is in space. This is like an ionospheric extension to Orion. If you fell into that hole, holy sh NASA found very cold cloud top temperatures within the southern Indian Ocean's tropical cyclone Kananga that indicate powerful thunderstorms reaching high into the troposphere. Those storms were generating very heavy rainfall as confirmed by the Global Precipitation Measurements Mission or GPM core satellite. What does that mean to you and me? <laughs> These people are totally fluxed. Let's look at it once again. This cone of moisture extends into the troposphere. That's above scientific levels that we can't even discuss. Earthquake swarm close to Hildebrand. Now, this is a an extinct volcano, according to many. But since yesterday, 18 December 2018, there have been an earthquake swarm close to Hildebrand. Wikipedia, you can click it. Largest earthquake in this swarm has a magnitude of 2.7. The swarm is currently ongoing, and there's no and there is a risk of a large earthquake. Here is the ancient caldera. Here is the red dot swarm. Now. Just for background, Iceland has to be happens to be situated on a mid-ocean ridge. <coughs> so quickly we'll go there. 4.8 kicking off in Tonga. So here you see the mid-Atlantic ridge extending up through Iceland, the center of the island, through Svalbard and up into the Arctic. This is a divergent plate boundary. Divergent plate boundaries are boundaries where plates are pulling apart and commonly referred to as a rift zone where you get this jagged edge stepping of the rift here. This is called a rift step. And in this rift zone, you have these red triangles. They represent active volcanoes. Krafla here is the volcano in question. 
Over 140 earthquakes have been reported so far since the earthquake swarm is currently ongoing. That number is going to change. Thanks. I bet you it goes in the positive direction too. Wow. Thank you. This earthquake swarm appears to be only tectonic in nature, which means that Mary Greeley didn't get a hold of the data yet because there'd be magma flowing everywhere in this region. But I digress. Simply another example of diver divergent plate boundaries as the Earth swells due to cosmic ray flux inflating the planet, causing these mid-ocean ridges to rift or pull apart and allowing that magma to flow up to the surface and cause airline delays and food shortages, which you should be preparing for unless you're an idiot. Seismic update, no quakes of note. We got a red banger, San Juan Boista, California, 2.7. I'm sure someone sharded themselves there. Several other little mini rockers in this region. Frack quakes in the middle. No other quakes of note. 5.1 in Vanuatu. At a deep depth. Blot echo much. We're looking at a higher magnitude at the surface here in the next now to now. Could be any time now. And we would have a powwow, especially if we lived in that region. But we have a terrible news to report for that area. 20 volcanoes across Indonesia currently showing above normal activity. People are in their pants at the Jakarta Post and other volcanic regions and seismic activity is on the uptick and they're, they have no idea what's going on. Had they been watching the channel a year ago, they would know this would happen. The uptick was predicted and we nailed it! Mount Agung has seen from on the resort island of Bali September 24th. Now, facts. The volcano the Volcanology and Geological Hazard Mitigation Center, PVMBG, has noted that there are 20 volcanoes with above normal levels of activity across the country of Indonesia, which is putting tens of millions of people in harm's way. One of them has the status of AWAS, which is danger to or on Saiga. Watch. The remaining 17 are on holy sh**. We're about to blow or caution. The Awas is Mount Sinabung in New North Sumatra. The Saga is Mount Agung in Bali. And Saputan, which just blew its lid the other day in North Sulawesi, is also on the list. Which means there's a sh ton of other volcanoes about to blow. Christiana said the number of volcanoes were popular tourist destinations during the Christmas and New Year's New Year holiday period, which means some people may lose their flesh. Ho, ho, ho. Facts are in. Worldwide Volcano News Update. 20 volcanoes on high alert in Indonesia, as well as dozens erupting around the world. Abiko, eruption today. Shivalush, heads up, eruption today. Krakatoa, eruption. Indonesia, Dukono, Sabankaya. Amofaya. Planchon, Peteroa in central Chile. Uptick. We have sporadic ash today. Eruptive activity recently increasing. Saputan had a bump recently. There's the boom. And here we have Krakatoa getting more purple to the right, which means that you should boat away from the island, not towards it. <laughs> but we love the footage. We'll give you volcano footage tomorrow. We just had too many links open. You know why sea level is rising faster in some places in the East Coast than others? Because they're full of... Yeah, because it doesn't, when you have a buoy, it doesn't mean anything. When you see the Statue of Liberty is at the same exact spot it was back in 1880, then you can say they're full of sh Yeah, because sea level is regional. And especially when you get up into New England that was covered by an ice sheet just 10,000 years ago, you can imagine that there's going to be isostatic rebound. This used to see, or relative deformation of the crust, where it comes up and down based on weight, <coughs> means that sea levels should actually be falling. Since the last glacial period, this the land should be rising because all the weight has been released from it. It's a recovery. 
they're claiming sea level's rising, but it's not because the land is also rising. That's why nothing's rising and nothing catastrophic is happening. And New York is in the same place. No matter what this article claims, that sea level's up nine feet in some areas, they're absolutely lying because they don't provide any pictures or proof of that. And you know why? Because there is no proof of catastrophic sea level rise anywhere. And the places that we're claiming it the most in Micronesia, those islands are actually rising and they now have more square miles of land than back in 1990 when they started their bitching. Are you starting to be twitching? Because I'm snitching on these frauds like NASA. Asteroid warning, monster asteroid headed to Earth December 26th. The only problem is it's going to be 1.2 Two seven million miles away and it's 50 feet wide. Do I care? Nope. We did warn about false alien sightings today as they launched the supermassive Falcon X but it didn't get launched and there was still crazy sh in the sky. As if, just like what happened up in Sunspot the powers that be are beginning an extreme program of disinformation to get you prepared for some event that is coming very soon. <clears throat> now, it's my opinion that this is a the re-entrance of the Soyuz rocket, which is set to re-enter today because it looks like a re-entry trail. This thing is moving exceptionally slow this baby and the reason that the tail is moving disjunctly here and I'm a skydiver so let me explain this to you let's go back where it's a little better here and pause it if this is a re-entry object and it's falling into the atmosphere for the first time the ionosphere first and the troposphere and the stratosphere and so on as this heats up it's going to act like a meteor now Let's go back. You really need to follow me here. Let's blow this up. Pause it. <laughs> I can't do it. Boom. Let's get big. Yeah. Okay. So what's going to happen here is that this arrow is really going to screw with us. As this object re-enters uh, our atmosphere from the ionosphere into the troposphere and then the stratosphere and so on, these zigzags are because of different differential wind patterns. Now, as a skydiver, when you leave five minutes before you get into a plane, before you jump out, you're inside of air traffic control checking the wind column. Because if I'm going to jump out near a halo jump or at maximum altitude, 13,000 feet above the surface, I have huge amounts of air column to fall through. Over two miles, I'm going to fall down through. And in that two mile air column, the wind speeds shift dramatically. In one direction for 500 to 3,000 feet, the wind might be going 120 miles an hour to the west. And then I might hit another column where the wind is in a thousand foot area where it's going 100 miles to the east and so on and so forth. This air column is critical to skydivers because you're just a buffeting, falling, dead human about to hit earth and the whole objective of skydiving is to live so you need to know where your dying body falling to earth is going to be whipped around in space because you're trying to drop into the drop zone you left from which is usually a square mile that's it so if you get blown three miles off what are the odds of you landing on that square mile zero you're going to hit a power line a house and die decapitated electrocuted so an object re-entering the atmosphere, the tail of it would react just like this. As it's burning or leaving its trail of burning, it's a slow motion, quote unquote, natural meteorite, which is the re-entry of the Soyuz spacecraft splashing down in the Pacific. Just happened to coincide with the, when everyone was looking up for aliens. And there it is. Not a meteor, too slow. Definitely the re-entry of a spacecraft, which would be big and dirty 
and make a big trail. Noctilucent, sun just set here, so it's lighting it up unnaturally. The more natural trail is up above here, above the sun. So this just is happening to get hit by the sun at the very moment <coughs> it needed to. Here's more noctilucent evidence of that. And then we're going to get to more conspiracy here because it gets crazy. I can't even make it up. This is not going to play. Oh, well. Same time, SpaceX Blue Origin postponed its rocket launch in Texas. Two back-to-back -back launches. Let's and go. breaking news, a mysterious light in the sky. Look, Sky 7 was flying above San Francisco about 30 minutes ago when we saw this bright light. Yeah, it's not clear what it is. However, a NASA Soyuz cruise ship uh, is riding back to Earth as we speak. Oh! He just stole my theory. Is, however, a NASA Soyuz cruise ship uh, is riding back to Earth as we speak. <laughs> There was a rocket launch planned tonight at Vandenberg Air Force Base near Santa Barbara, but the company says that launch was scrubbed and did not happen, so that's not it. A planned SpaceX launch today was also scrubbed. That didn't happen. Tyler. People have reported seeing this light as far south as Santa Cruz as well as in the Central Valley. One more time. Confirming my theory. Let's listen. It's a go. It's a go. <laughs> so that, that was just amazing that that happened live there. But also down in Texas, two back-to-back -back launches of SpaceX and Blue Origin have to wait a bit longer for liftoff after technical issues forced both companies to call off the launch. Apparently, some guy was smoking a dube or something like that on a program. It's the second day of launch delays for both companies. On Tuesday, a ground equipment forced Blue Origin to call off its attempted suborbital launch of its new Shepard spacecraft from West Texas. And a short time later, a senior issued on SpaceX Falcon 9 delayed the launch of a new GPS-3 navigation sat for the U.S. Air Force from Cape Canaveral. So Cape Canaveral, West Texas, Santa Monica, Santa Barbara, wherever that Falcon X super bomb was launching, all canceled. All at the same time. Huh. I wonder if that space weather's getting involved. Let's talk about some solutions. <clears throat> Six ways to avoid frostbite in your chickens. If you don't have chickens yet, get them. They cost a dollar each. You can even get them for 40 cents if you buy 100 and you don't care what they are. But I suggest that you care what they are, especially you buy chickens suitable for your region. All the breeds we have here are cold hardy. They lay through the winter, even if it's minus 20. They have small combs so they don't get frostbite. But a lot of you are idiots and you'll just buy chickens at Tractor Supply because they're there. And they'll have big combs. And this information may help you. Some frostbite fr facts about your chickens. But first of all, raise cold hardy breeds. These are gold laced The name is escaping me, but they're gold laced. This is a cold hardy breed. They have small combs. They're fat and fluffy. And you can see here they're sitting on a flat perch. And that means when they sleep, their feet are covered with their feathers. See how she's down there? <coughs> That's another way you can keep them from frostbite on their feet and their, and their waddles or their comb. We also use one of the most researched heating elements in all of chickenhood. Do not buy the 75 watt heaters that you put in the bottom of your coop. Waste of money. Do not buy the 250 watt brooder lights and put them in your coop. You're burning energy. That's stupid. All you need is half of a cinder block and a 23 lot white bulb, light bulb that you rig up in your own light bulb porcelain holder underneath. You have to be crafty. Screw it down to a piece of plywood. Add a switch. And then you put the plastic drinker on top of that. That gives you extended light for the winter season to improve laying. It keeps the water unfrozen down to minus 20 where I live. And it heats the coop enough to prevent frostbite on your chickens for 23 watts of energy. 
That's it. So, definitely ask people who raise chickens about how to raise chickens before you make mistakes. Make a good coop. You don't have to insulate it, but make it solid out of solid wood. It's not drafty, but is vented. So you can vent it. If you live in a moist region and you don't vent, your chickens are going to get all kinds of diseases and you'll have a nightmare. You need to keep the coop dry. And supplement with heat the way I described. Flat roofs allow your chickens to lay on their feet. And always shovel off an area that will dry out. Put your chicken areas in a south-facing area that will get sun in the winter. You have to calculate this. If you put your chickens in the shade in the winter, you're screwed. They're going to get bumblefoot. They're going to get sick and die. Not produce. Chickens love to eat snow, but they like to walk on dry ground. This is an excellent job by these two young farmers. Trust me. I've learned from experience. Now, if you've been salivating over <coughs> hooking up these underprivileged kids in Monument Valley, the time has come. So I'm going to leave you links to Global Witnesses, most recent video, Monument Valley Navajo Children Christmas Drive. <coughs> he emailed me the list. So if you can't find this, I can email you the list if you contact us at Oppenheimer Ranch at Gmail. But the list is right here. A laptop for Amya, seven years old. She needs clothes, clothes size seven to eight girls. She wants a bike or a telescope. Elander is nine. He wants a jacket, size seven, eight boys. Julian is 11. Needs a jacket, medium men's. He wants Fallout 4. It's a, P it's a game. Cadrian's two. They want size 4T clothes and a dinosaur toy. Kaylee, newborn. Clothes, jacket, <coughs> newborn shoes. Jeremy is age 17. He wants... Whatever this is, Xbox games and other games. Kalaya is 15, basketball and basketball shoes. Kalamaya, 13, a stuffed penguin toy, a jacket and socks. Have you ever seen a list like this from children? Jeremiah wants an airplane toy. <coughs> and he needs a jacket. Take a look. If you can afford to buy these gifts, I'll leave you links to the address to send them. Navajo Donations, Care of, Figgies Trading Post, 222 and a half South Montezuma Street, Prescott, Arizona. You can put the kids' names on. You could send anything there. They need food. They need water. They need anything that lasts a long time. They don't have many refrigerators. They run on solar, so it's very limited. Anything preparedness they could use, especially clothes. Every one of those kids asked for a jacket. I mean, my God, a jacket is, cost $3 at the thrift store. I never asked for a jacket when I was a kid for Christmas. They need food for their <coughs> animals. Their animals are starving. So if you can find a local hay dealer, you want to go out on a limb near Prescott, bring a whole truck of hay over to Figgy's Trading Post. For the Navajo donations. <clears throat> we have a $40 telescope in the store. If you want to send that. There's a $100 one. <clears throat> now, if you want to know about preparedness and how to freeze dry food 
you need a freeze dryer. I've been looking into this. Harvest Right is, supplies the country and the world with one of the only commercial freeze dryers available. They're very expensive. But the unique thing about this, that it's not canning, if you have the money, is that the food that you freeze dry retains up to 95 to 97% of the nutrition for up to 25 year shelf life. So I reached out to Harvest Right today and they made us an affiliate so that the channel could get 3% of their freeze dryers that you buy. So we benefit and you start a new business. I'm going to tell you right now that Someone in our community bought a freeze dryer last year at the farmer's market and they sold over a thousand units of freeze dried food at six dollars a bag. And there were four or six ounce bags of freeze dried fruit that they just simply buy from the orchard and freeze dry. This is an absolute win money making opportunity. If you want to invest in one of these, they go up to three thousand dollars for a big one thousand bucks for a small one but if you have 10 apple trees in your backyard you can turn that into ten thousand dollars worth of freeze-dried apples and you just need to pay 20 bucks for your farmers market get a bag and smile that's a tidbit you cannot lose with this business model if you want more information ask me I will tell you how to market it. I will tell you how to sell it. And you will kill it. And that's a boom. Think outside of the box. Times are changing. Opportunities are opening. Are you preparing? Are you researching ways to be prepared? Are you learning what food is edible around your house that's growing in the spring? Do you know that you need to eat dandelion flowers? That information is power. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. I want to thank each and every one of our new Patreons, all of our original patrons. <coughs> Maury Root for sending pickles. This guy spent $35 to mail me six jars of his pickles, which are amazing. Delicious, Mari. Keep up the good work. And for everyone that sent us out gifts, my heart swells and I'm humbled. Thank you. Be safe.